Thanks. So we are continuing on with our learning about life cycles of vertebrate animals. And today we are focusing on reptiles, birds, and fish. So what are reptiles? Well, we learned when we did our classification part of the unit, when we were putting them into groups, that reptiles are cold-blooded. And we talked about this yesterday, about what it means. And that, if we remember, cold-blooded just means that animals cannot control their own temperature. So they need other sources. So to get warm, they might need to leave the water and go lay in the sun. And then to cool down, they would need to go into the water again. So unlike humans that have the same body temperature, which I believe is 36.7 degrees Celsius around there, reptiles, their body temperature changes depending on where they are. So if they're in the sun, they'll heat up. And if they are in the water, they'll cool down. So their body temperatures gets warmer in the sun and colder in the water. Most reptiles lay eggs, which is why we are kind of lumping them in with fish and birds. And their skin is covered with hard, dry scales. And in all of the pictures, except for the turtle, because I think it's too small, you can actually see the scales on their skin. So all reptiles have this. Reptiles can be found on every continent except for Antarctica, probably because it is too cold and they would freeze because they need to have moments of sun because they're cold-blooded. And reptiles are animals like snakes, crocodiles and alligators, turtles, and lizards. So there's a few pictures of some reptiles there. See if you can... Tell me what they all are, or tell mom and dad if you know what they all are. You don't have to tell me exactly, like, I don't need to know if it's like a python snake. You can just say snake, and that works for me. So we're moving on to birds. Now, birds are the only animals that have feathers. No other animal in the world has feathers, just birds. They also lay eggs. Um, they have wings and hollow bones. So remember, they have wings and feathers, but just because they have wings doesn't mean that all birds can fly. There are some birds, even on this PowerPoint picture, that cannot fly. So see if you can guess which one it is. I'm not going to tell you. You have to figure it out. You're going to have to research it on your own. There might be one, there could be two, who knows. Uh, birds are also warm-blooded. So that means that they can make their own body heat just like humans. So they don't need to be in the sun to warm up or in the water to cool down, which is why penguins can live in Antarctica and other cold climates and why some birds can be in hot tropical places like a toucan or a parrot. So they can be in different environments around the world and it doesn't matter because they can control their own body temperature. So we also have different sizes of birds. So we have a tiny little bird, which is the hummingbird, and that is literally the size of it. It's the size of a flower. And then we can have really big birds, like an emu. So there are different sizes of birds, but everything the same that for all of the birds is that they all have wings with feathers. So now we go on to fish, and we know that fish live and breathe in water. And obviously I needed to include Dory. And I believe that's Nemo's dad. I first thought it was Nemo, but now that I'm looking at it, that's definitely Nemo's dad. I must have cut Nemo off. I feel bad for Nemo. Um, I guess we need to find him. <laughs> oh, that was great. It just wrote itself. So fish breathe through gills and they have fins and scales. Fish are cold-blooded. So they tend to swim to warmer waters when they need to warm up and colder waters when they need to cool down. And there are 32,000 different species of fish and they can be really big fish like a shark or even a, a whale shark. They can be eels, they can be dory and nemo or just any type of fish, salmon, trout, cod, everything. But remember that whales and dolphins 
even though that they live and breathe in water, they are not fish. And we'll talk a little bit more about why they're not fish tomorrow when we learn about mammals. So if you want any more information about the different classifications of those animals, so reptiles, birds, and fish, you can check out these videos. They'll also kind of talk about some of their life cycles. So those are good information if you want to. Remember, you don't have to. So the life cycles of reptiles, birds, and fish, basically, they're all very similar. They all start as an egg. The egg hatches, and then we have the baby reptile, bird, or fish. Then they grow up to be adults and lay eggs of their own. Fish have an extra stage, which is called the larva stage, and we will take a look at their life cycle later on in the video. So basically, the reason why we group them together today is because they're all pretty similar, because they all start as an egg. So that is the most important thing that you can take away from this page, is that reptiles, birds, and fish mostly all start as an egg. Wink, wink for your check-in on Thursday. You might need to know that. So we're going to start going through the life cycle of reptiles, and I believe I have three for you. So we're starting with a snake because I think it was my least favorite reptile, so I wanted to get it done first because it's giving me the, ugh, I, ugh, I hate snakes. They're so slithery. Uh, so snakes can lay up to two or three eggs or 100. So it depends on what type of snake it is. Um, snake eggs, they're not hard like you would have like a bird egg or an egg that you buy at the store. They are soft like leather and they take 45 to 90 days to hatch. So that can be up to three months to hatch. The baby snake breaks out by using a special egg tooth, which they lose after they're born because they don't need it anymore once they've escaped the egg. And it takes about between one to three years for a baby snake to grow into an adult so it can lay its own eggs. Now, an interesting thing to note is that some snakes actually are like mammals and they give birth to live babies. They do not lay eggs. So even though most snakes do lay eggs, some of them don't. And that's a little bit confusing. But uh, they're still considered snakes. So rattlesnakes, garter snakes, boa constrictors, they're still snakes, but they just give birth to live babies. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to the life cycle of a fish, because some of the fish have different life cycles as well. So next up, we have the life cycle of an alligator. Seriously, I prefer alligators to snakes, even though they would probably just eat me. I would think I prefer that to a snake. Um, so, an adult lays 10 to 90 eggs at a time, and the eggs take 9 to 10 weeks to hatch, and then the baby alligator will actually live with its mom, so it stays with mom for 1 to 3 years, and a fun fact is that a group of baby alligators with their mom is called a pod. So maybe that's important to know that a group of baby alligators is called a pod, kind of like a gang, so like a gang of baby alligators, but it's just a pod. So it can actually take 10 to 12 years for an alligator to become an adult and lay eggs of their own, which is a pretty long time. If you look at a snake only took one to three years, the alligator takes 10 to 12 years. So we're saving my favorite reptile for last, and that is the life cycle of a sea turtle. Now, in the UAE, you're really lucky because you can actually witness the life cycle of turtles. If you go down to the beach, I know that you can uh, volunteer for the turtle patrol at Sadiat Beach, and you can actually go and look for baby turtle eggs and find nests and see even like adult turtles, and then you can help the babies get to the sea. And I believe you can do that in Oman as well. So an adult sea turtle lays their eggs at night on a beach. So they come in, they dig a hole, and they lay their eggs there. And then they cover the hole up and they leave. So they just leave the babies alone. So depending on what type of turtle it is, 
between six weeks to two months later, baby turtles will hatch and they'll walk to the sea. And they walk to the sea using the moon to guide them to the sea, which is why that sometimes there's problems because of the lights that we have in buildings that are near the beach. Sometimes people actually say during the time when baby turtles hatch, um, sea turtles hatch, that they have to turn off the lights in their buildings near the beach so that the turtles don't get confused and think a uh, hotel lights is actually the moon. Because they don't know, they're just babies. So same as a snake, to break their egg open, the baby sea turtles have an egg tooth, which is just like what the snake had, and that again goes away because they don't need it after they've opened up the egg. And it can take between 10 and 50 years for a turtle to become an adult and have their own eggs. So even though they've been born, some of them actually don't have their own eggs until they're 50 years old. That's so old. Can you imagine not having any kids until you're 50? Crazy. So let's move on to life cycles of birds. So we're going to start with a life cycle of an emperor penguin. I like penguins the best. I was watching Happy Feet on the weekend. So, you know, obviously we needed to learn about emperor penguins. So emperor penguins, they only lay one egg. And both the mom and dad penguin can take care of the egg and sit on it to keep it warm, but it's actually mostly the dad penguin that looks after the egg. So the mom goes to find food, and then she comes back when the egg is hatching. But the dad actually is in charge of protecting it and keeping it warm. So eggs normally hatch 65 to 75 days after they've been laid. And that's normally in the freezing winter months in Antarctica. So it's freezing when they're born. So because of that, chicks stay in a brood pouch, which is basically, if you look on the picture, where the penguin's feet are, there's a little pouch, and the penguin like lives in between the feet in this little pouch. So if you think about how a penguin doesn't really move its feet very much, you can see that. Because the baby penguin has to be on the feet because if he touches the snow then he'll get cold and that's what we don't want. So the chicks stay in the pouch for about 50 days after they hatch and that's until they get their warmed down and you can see that the chick at the bottom it has like gray feathers and that's the down part so it's just feathers that keep them warm. And then when they are 150 days old they start to hunt on their own with other parents. So shortly after they're 150 days old, then they are old enough to lay their own eggs and have babies of their own. But first they hunt and then they hatch. So they, and then they lay eggs, sorry. So it happens is, as a cycle, but it depends on the seasons as well. So they're not going to be like, I'm 150 days old. I need to lay an egg now. They're going to go and start to hunt. They're going to eat some food and then they come back depending on the seasons. So we're going to quickly look at the life cycle of a chicken, okay? This is your typical life cycle of a bird. So the hen lays an egg and sits on the egg to keep it warm. It takes 20 days for the egg to hatch, and then the chick will grow into an adult chicken after about 16 to 24 weeks. So it takes about three months or so uh, for the from the egg to get to be an adult chicken and then they can lay their own eggs. So this happens really quickly and this is the same for a lot of birds. This is a good example of what your typical bird life cycle looks like. So the last life cycle we're going to look at in, for birds is an emu. And basically the mom in the winter lays about 5 to 20 eggs. And then again, the dad sits on them to keep them warm. So after about six, sorry, seven to eight weeks, the chicks are born. So they hatch from the eggs. And they do leave the nest within a few days of hatching. But they are looked after by their dads for six months. And they learn everything from their dads. So the penguins, if we go back, 
the penguin dad basically looks after the egg and then mom and dad switch off. So mom will come and look after the newly hatched chick and then dad will go find food and then when dad's gone to find so when dad comes back then mom will go find food and they they take turns looking after the baby but in emu dad does it for six months that's a long time and then after about 20 months okay and the emu can stay with her family but once they learn everything from dad, then they can go off on their own. But after 20 months, an emu chick is considered to be an adult. So it takes 20 months for them to be an adult. And then they can lay their own eggs and the cycle starts again. So the life cycle of fish is what we're going to do next. Uh, fish was really hard to find. So there's only two. Uh, but they are pretty, the life cycle of a salmon is fairly common for all fish. Uh, it's just a little bit different because salmon eggs are laid in rivers and a lot of fish live in the ocean as well. But salmon eggs, even though they swim in the ocean and seas, they actually swim to rivers to lay their eggs. After three months, eggs hatch into tiny salmon called alvins. And an alvin, if you look in the picture, they have a small sack that's attached to them. And it's called a yolk sack and that gives them food. After four to six weeks, they enter the fry stage, which basically means that they've lost the yolk sac, so they no longer need it because now they can eat food on their own. They're still tiny. They're about the size of a marker cap, so you can look at a marker and see how small that is. And then after one to five years of living in the river, they then become adults and they travel to the ocean and seas. And then they return to the river to lay eggs. So normally fish will just lay the eggs in the ocean at the bottom and they'll hide them under rocks and things so they don't get eaten and then they just swim away and they don't necessarily come back to the same places but salmon they go to the exact same river where they were born and they lay their eggs in the exact same place that they were born. So the life cycle of a shark is where it gets a little bit complicated because not all sharks have the same life cycle. So basically, the things that are similar are that as soon as pups, which are baby sharks, another important word to know, as soon as pups are born into the water, they swim away and they just care for themselves. So they're like, hey mom, I've just been born, see you later, you know, I don't know when, like in 10 years time or whatever, and then we'll just hang. So they, they never, they might not ever see their parents, their mom or their dad ever again. They just literally are born and then swim away. Some sharks give birth to up to 100 babies at a time, whereas some others may only have a few babies. And that depends on the type of life cycle that they have. So the baby sharks that are hatched from an egg can take several months to over two years we don't know for sure. I looked to find the answer, and this is the best that I could, could find. So it can take several months, and sometimes it takes two years to hatch. So here's where it gets interesting. There are three ways that sharks have babies. One way is called o oviparity, and that is that sharks lay eggs, like a bird or, you know, just like a fish. Viviparity is when a shark gives birth to a live young, which happens with mammals. And ovoviviparity are when eggs are kept inside the mom's body and the eggs actually hatch inside the body. And there's different science ways of knowing which shark is which because you can tell because it has this or it doesn't have this. But those are the three ways that sharks have babies. Okay, so some of them lay eggs, some of them give birth to live young, and some of them have eggs inside the mom's body until the eggs hatch, which protects them pretty well, I think. So if you want to watch some more videos to find some more information on reptiles, birds, or fish life cycles, there's a few. There's not a lot of good videos for kids out there. I looked, I spent hours looking just to find a few videos, 
Um, I've included a couple read-alouds for you. Life cycles of reptiles, fish, and birds are not very popular, uh, but there are, if you want to do your own searching, maybe with mom and dad, you can look for some, for some of the videos um, on your own and see what you can find, okay? And even though there's no work for you to do today, I found a couple extra activities. Again, there's not that many, but there are three kind of optional activities that you can do if you would like. So you can make your own life cycle of a chicken, uh, just using some paper and you can paint or color or anything like that. And the website is there. You can make a sea turtle flex tangle which I still can't quite figure out how it works. So if you do make it, please show it to me because I think it looks really cool. And you can just print it off. It's just a PDF that you can print off and you can color it. It says to use cardstock, but I'm sure regular paper is fine. And the last one that I found was bird life cycles. And there are different puzzles for you to do. Uh, you can color them and then cut them out, put them together. So that's a good way of practicing your life cycles for different birds. I couldn't find anything on reptiles, just frogs, which are amphibians. So that was not helpful. Thank you, not uh, Google let me down today. Uh, so yes, there are, if you find any extra activities that you want to do, you want to Google and do some extras, that's cool. Um, show me what you have. You can send me pictures. Otherwise, there were the games that you can play from the lesson that we did on Sunday with the different online games. So you can play those as well. So again, there's no activity to do today, except for if you would like to, you can do these extra activities. These are bonus, so they're totally optional. You don't have to do them. If you do, please send me a picture or a video. I'd love to see them. And remember that on Thursday we are going to be doing a quick check-in and that is going to be a Kahoot quiz. So make sure that you have Kahoot and I will give you more information on Thursday for that. All right, so have fun. And if you do the extra activities, make sure that you show them to me.